Hey, what's up, guys? This is Freaky Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And I think we need to talk about explosions, shockwaves, and particle advection because this is just a super satisfying topic and you can create the most stunning effects very easily with Cinema 4D's new particle engine. I just want to mention that when you go to the content browser in your latest Cinema 4D iteration, then you will actually find a lot of cool project files that Maxon is so kind to provide us with to study by ourselves so you can learn a lot of techniques from these ones. I just think it sometimes is a little bit complicated, especially for beginners to understand everything and to be sure that you tick all of the necessary check boxes and then probably your result will just look different. So I decided to just break down one of these project files. But yes, here is already the disclaimer. I didn't create this one by myself. I just studied the knowledge that Maxon is so kind to provide us with and I thought it will be helpful for you if I just break it down because this is such a useful knowledge and it can be difficult to understand everything especially for beginners if you study these files by yourself okay so this is what we want to do today just allow me to tell you about my awesome patreon where you can get lots more of cool training for example when you just sign in for free right now you can get this lesson here for free so if you are curious on daily habits for success and power especially for freelance 3d artists then this lesson could be interesting for you you just have have to sign in for the free membership and then you will get this lesson without any commitment to other stuff but if you want to for example subscribe to the knights tier then you will get a lot of cool training and knowledge i mean you can see that i post on a regular basis and that some people already trust me that i deliver high quality content and if you are not happy then just ask me for a full refund all right that's also fine just one last thing to mention right now if you subscribe to the knights tier still almost all the products in my patreon shop are for free free to download okay i definitely need to change this one but if you want to get all of these products here for example these assets here or these assets or crazy cool project files more assets okay so you will get all of these ones as a free download if you subscribe to the knights tier as i said i definitely need to change this one but right now this is just a really good package and of course on top you get lots of cool tutorials exclusively on my patreon this is me by the way on instagram if you just want to follow follow my latest art and if you don't want to become a patreon that's absolutely fine just one thing which would be like a cool favor if you subscribe to my youtube channel ring the bell do the good stuff maybe even leave a comment but now let's break down this project file about pyro explosions and learn something awesome okay and i think especially this one is very interesting about how you can create beautiful particle explosions I mean, some advection effect with particles using pyro is just really powerful and beautiful. So you can see this movement of these particles is just very physical and beautiful. Just, just look at these beautiful curls. And the cool thing is when you simulated something like this, then you can go everywhere and look for beautiful shots with probably a lot of depth of field, for example. And you can also, when you cast it, then slow it down and let it play back really really slow or come into the shot super fast and then you slow it down and do a little bit of a move around it and just create some stunning powerful shots and because sometimes it is a bit hard for beginners to understand these files and just break them down to understand every detail of it i went through it made some notes and now i understand exactly what you have to keep in mind and what check boxes you have to activate and all of that stuff to create this stunning effect just be sure that you will find these files if you want to study them by yourself here in the content browser or it's called asset browser when you just type in particles then you will find different scene files as example files and this one was once again created by Daria and um, yeah let's be thankful that he created these example files and let's just study them so i would say i will just fire up a completely new scene and let's close this one and once again let's get rid of the borders i just want to create a little plane here just like a little anchor point that i can grab and rotate around because sometimes when you just work with particles then it is really hard to grab something and rotate around it so yes this is just a little helper here and i would say we just try to build this one from scratch hopefully i can do this one without any mistakes so let's just try this one 
First, we want to create an emission TO. So this is something that you need to emit smoke from. And then we will use the smoke or the spiral sim to guide or to attract our particles. So this is step one to, for example, start with a circle. And I think we don't want to emit from a circle, but we want to emit from a little ribbon or something like that. So I would put this one into an extrude. Let's just get rid of the upper and bottom, upper and lower part and by the way I don't want to see this grid all the time I think it's a little bit annoying and I want to just put this one to 30 for example then I want to keyframe this one and I want to actually keyframe the radius from zero where we want to put this one to roughly around 50 something like this and then I just want to animate this one really fast up to 240, for example. And let's just see. Okay, something like this one. And we will use this one to just create a little pyro shockwave or explosion, something like that. Okay, so this is moving super fast, but we also want to give it some randomness. It shouldn't be like linear all around. So let's help it a little bit by putting a displacer underneath the circle. Let's do it like this. Let's put this one to 90 and let's just put a noise into it. And I think that this one is already good enough. So you have like this crazy rubber band here exploding or moving outwards. And this will be perfect for our geometry okay so let's go over to step two where we want to emit pyro from this rubber band therefore let's put a pyro emitter onto it and let's just go into the settings you can see that you already get something in the scene let's just let this play back and this is definitely not working okay so you can see mm, this one, I mean, this one looks more like some brain substance here with this crazy pattern here. Okay, so we definitely have to adjust these settings and let's just dive into it. I don't want to explain everything too long, but for example, I would first increase the sub steps. Let's see if this one is already helping it. Not really, but it's just good for a more smooth simulation. What is really important is to change this one to dynamic geometry. And I think that this one already will help the simulation quite a lot. So you can see already just turning this one to dynamic geometry, you would be almost there. You already have like a really beautiful beautiful simulation here but I think we just want to fine-tune it a little bit more for example you could go lower with the thickness to just have it a little bit lighter but already you can see you get like a beautiful shockwave with just a couple of adjustments one thing that I would like to change is to not emit all the time from our little ring here so I would say that we want to change the density emission and also the temperature emission therefore let's probably go to frame 4 five for example and set the density set to two and the density add to 50 let's just do it like this and i think you can just increase the temperature values also so we want to start with 8000 and let's turn this one to 4000 and by the way i learned all of these numbers by studying the project file okay but you can definitely play a little bit with it maybe you don't have to change it like this you can try some other values but these ones they will give the effect from the project file and then when you dialed these ones in I think we want to turn them down to zero so you don't emit any temperature or density anymore so let's just go through it and let's put some zeros into it let's do it like this let's check the simulation one more time but yes now you can see there is no more smoke or fire emitted after frame 10 and we are one step closer to our final animation something which will just give it more power from the velocity is when you go to velocity okay and you can increase this one by a factor of 10 so just add one more zero to it and I think already this will be way more powerful. You can see now this has way more pressure and movement outwards. I mean, now this one is really aggressive and it's going pretty wild, but I think that this one is still a good value. So let's keep this one. We don't need any noise here. Let's see it once again. All right. What I don't like is all of these little curls and vorticity here, but I think we can get rid of this one in a second. 
because I think now it is time to just go into the pyro overall settings and therefore for example you could just go to the pyro output and let's go to the pyro scene and in the pyro settings here and for example when we just increase this one to 20 then we have way less resolution in our simulation okay but i think that 20 will actually be enough because we won't render the smoke we only will see the particles and we just want to have like these curls from the smoke but you don't really have to keep this one at five this would be just way too much resolution so you can easily go up to 20. let me see this once again this one will be totally fine, all right. I just want to increase also the sub steps here to just give it more smoothness and precision. Now let's go into the three settings and the padding. I'm not an expert for this one, but in the project file, they turned this one down to one. When you just right click and study the show help for very small voxel sizes in combination with very fast changing simulations. Actually, this is something that we have. It may be useful to increase this value, all right. So it's seems like actually it makes sense to increase this one so go higher with it but for some reason they went lower with it let's just see this one with a value of one let's turn this one to a value of two all right it seems like when you increase this one the simulation is definitely slower so you lose a lot of speed here let's just see it seems like this padding is kind of calculation intensive let's turn this one back to two Let's turn it back to one. So probably they just turned this one down because it doesn't make any difference with such a simple simulation. And you can even increase the speed here when you just turn the padding down to one. So yes, let's also do this. And they also changed the turbulence settings just a little bit. So for example, Daria increased the strength to 150. Let's just see if this one is making a difference. Let's turn this one up to 1,500. Okay, okay now i'm feeling the difference okay let's turn it back to the original value of 50. all right and let's turn it up to 150. i think that this does make so much sense i mean there is a little bit of distortion now here and this will definitely make it more interesting let's turn this one up to 500. All right, now it's getting blown over to this side. And I think turbulence is always a good thing. So let's also go with 150. When you change these octaves, then you basically change the noise pattern, the size of the turbulence. So let's reduce this one to 100, for example. And let's just see if this one is changing anything. I want to see this once again with a higher value. All right, yes, you can see that when you go lower with it, then the turbulence pattern is way smaller. So let's see this one with 800. You've got a big noise pattern, big movements here and there. But when you would turn this one down to 100, then you can see that the turbulence is way smaller and is giving you more small curls. In the project file, they went with a value of 100 and this one with 150. Okay, let's just see if this one is changing anything. Maybe you will get some curls here and there a bit more. But I think overall, to really feel this one, you would need to go higher with the strength. But this is actually looking not that beautiful with this amount of turbulence. So I would keep this one with values like these ones. All right. That's beautiful. And this one was increased in the original file to a value of one. But I honestly don't know if this one is changing a lot when you just increase it a little bit. Okay, let me see what happens with 10. Oh, all right. Okay, okay. This one is going crazy. Let's put it to two. All right, this has like a strong effect. I wasn't suspecting this one. All right. Looks like increment octave strength. This one is like a really crazy value, I guess, because it's incrementally adding values to it. So even when you change this one from 0 0.8 to 1 with a subtle change, you got quite a bit more of the turbulence. Let's turn this one up to 1.5 and you will see, yes, definitely this is changing it. Let's turn this one up to 2. All right. A lot of uh, stronger effect. Okay. So it seems like this one is a sensitive value. You can play with these ones up to your liking. You can just easily see what will be changed with your simulations. So just feel free to play with these ones. Let's go down to the draw value here. So here you can deactivate later 
that you don't want to see the pyro all the time when you want to focus on your particle sim. But for now we want to keep this one. We just want to get rid of the draw the boundary box around it. Already you can see this is simulating way faster than if you would have like these green lines around it. So let's get rid of these ones. And you can definitely decrease the density by a lot. So let's just reduce this one. Now you can see this is more like a little dust simulation. It's way more see-through. I like that. And you can also decrease the draw quality to 10 okay to have just a really fast feedback here okay but this is only for the drawing for now this is everything that we have to do in the pyro output settings now let's go over to step four let's press ctrl d and you already are in the particle settings the only thing that we want to do in this step of the tutorial is to go up with the sub steps because this will make the simulation way more clean your particles will have it way easier to follow along with the pyro so definitely you want to go up with this value we can later put this one down to one in comparison so you will see that you just will get an ugly simulation when you have this one on the original sub steps of one let's go over to step five all right this time we want to create the basic emitter let's put this one in the center here this is fine i think we can go with a sphere let's just make this one a little bit bigger let's set this one to a shot of let's see like a thousand let's add three more zeros now we have a million in the project file they went with a value of two million so let's also do that to get some beautiful density here and just push the system a little bit let's go over to the properties for the lifetime let's just dial in these numbers 65 with a variation of 20 we can add a lot more speed to it but also a lot of speed variance let's go down to the radius and let's make this one smaller let's also give it a lot of variation to have all kinds of different sizes for our particles and then the only thing that we also want to do is to go to the particle group draw the radius of our particles so we can see the size difference of our particles and set this one to zero this is good and now when we just see this one you got some particles here yeah you got some beautiful particle explosion but this is definitely not what you were expecting right okay so this is kind of underwhelming but the only thing that we now have to do is to attract these particles and we also want to colorize them on different values so let's just put this one back to zero then let's go in and put the pyro attract into the scene if you want to work really super clean you could put this one into your particle group and probably now we are a huge step closer to the result that we want to achieve but hmm all right this one is going a little bit crazy so i think you can get rid of a lot of this stuff that is disturbing you by just one click here set this one to none and i think that now you can get rid of all of these particles which are just doing crazy random things and already you can see now you get a beautiful simulation here we could also just make this one invisible to not see our emission geometry anymore and actually we could also go to the pyro output let's go down there and let's uncheck the drawing so we can only see the particles this is looking really nice okay so we are super close to the end result the only thing that is left to do is to put a color mapper into the scene let's just put it here and it seems like that when you map the velocity of your particles to the magnitude then you will just get a stunning effect let's just see now the velocity will be mapped to the magnitude with this gradient depending on the value between 0 and 1400 let's just see this one and there you go you got a stunning effect you could just invert this one let's go a little bit over there and i just try to replicate the colors from the project file let's do it like this maybe you want to make this end a little bit more bright so you got some highlights here something like this one let's just see this one and there you go you got something which is looking just amazing just look at these beautiful curls now you could cash the scene and let these ones play back in super slow motion and let's just see if we did a good job when we compare this one to the original project file and there you go and this one is pretty close i would say so yes i would say that this one was like a pretty smooth guide 
through this project file here. Let's just see which one is it. This one. Okay. And this should make it way more easy for you to understand all of the settings. Because when you just look at this one, there are quite some stuff that you have to activate and numbers that you have to dial in and stuff like that. And especially these pyro settings here. Just look at these ones. This can be quite a little bit overwhelming. You also have a lot of settings here in the pyro tag. So I just made it a little bit easier for you to follow along and understand everything that Maxon wants to share with you. So thank you so much once again for your time. See you in the next tutorial. Bye everyone.